<clears throat> All right, everybody. Well, you know, uh, for my birthday, Caroline had everybody had a bunch of my friends send me uh, a bunch of nice words. So I'm gonna I'm gonna read them all to you, um, just as a tribute to all my great friends. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Austin Walters. I wanted a battle of wits, but found was Steve was unarmed. Mm, that's medium nice, but I appreciate a good joke. Though I do have two arms right here. Uh, Jessica Sager says, I didn't know if Steve spends more time fighting trolls in Dungeons and Dragons or on Facebook. Either way, I don't think he's leveling up. Uh, I'll have you know that I level up uh, in both. Uh, and I'm putting the work in, all right? Wh what are you doing? Kayla says that Steve is incredibly average, and I'm not sure why he makes us roast him every year like he's someone important. Listen, I'm important to perhaps my child, maybe, for now. Um, Eric Dowdle says that Steve was born in Windsor, not wrong, but was pressured out of the royal family for being just like too white, you know? Eric, that is saying something considering uh, your lineage, but whatever. Uh, Mr. Lord Fauntleroy himself. Um, this joke isn't really funny. Like Steve. But it does go on for a really long time, just kind of rambling with no clear direction until it eventually gets a few... Pity laughs from people hoping it will stop. Good and rich. Let's hope it's not uh, prophetic for the rest of this list. Natalie says, Steve can't not get up to Bear's testimony every month because every open mic is his personal playground and our personal torture. Smiley face. You're not wrong, Natalie. Zach says that Steve is such a generous lover, you would know, that he gave Carol Ann free access to his OnlyFans account. First of all, it's not wrong. Second of all, he, she's not the only one. So uh, just send me a, send me a DM. Uh, my sister says that, uh, my sister Ellen, Steve so woke, it only took him three tours and an LDS mission to figure out that patriarchy equals bad. You're not wrong, Ellen. Uh, and I blame that on you. So take that. I've never been fond of Steve, says my mother. So uh, I wish I could say that was the first time I've heard that. Gwen says, in the restored gospel, we understand that God knows each of his children individually and appreciates their unique talents. That's why he calls business executives to run a charity, takes Steve's stapler, and moves his desk to the basement. You know, uh, there's not really like a compliment or any birthday, birthday wish in there, but those are all accurate statements. So, uh, my buddy Dick from the Marine says that he can't come up with much of a roast just wanted to say it's been a privilege watching Steve grow from an incel serial sexual harasser with an inexplicable fascist agenda and love for Erwin Rommel into a sexual serial sexual harasser with an inexplicable feminist agenda and a love of Erwin Rommel. You're absolutely right, and I, you know, that's that's what I deal with every day. Um, but the man is a genius, so uh, and Antifa is going to appreciate my expertise. Spencer Hawk says that Stephen is so bad at writing jokes, he makes all his friends do it for him. And that's the American dream, guy. Getting people to do your work for you. Rich Nielsen says that some of you might know that Steve and the Marines got divorced a few years ago. Steve thought he was too good for the Marines, but look at him now. A bitter, washed-up, part-time Bitcoin lawyer, always going on and on about how terrible the Marines are. The Marines, on the other hand, are still successfully pillaging the Middle East. They don't even talk about Steve at all. Listen, they talk about me plenty. They just got rid of tanks because they knew that they were nothing without well, Steve here. So take that. Uh, Darren Simpson says that Steve has no taste in friends. And you know what? I'm inclined to agree with him after some of the things you people are sending me on this birthday. What does Steve miss most about the Marines, asks Amelia. Wearing leggings. Look, look the Marines haven't worn leggings in like a century or more. Uh, Amelia, uh, I never did that officially, uh, and you know that we agreed to keep what I did unofficially uh, between us. Cammy says, these jokes are so bad that I have to make an effort to laugh as positive reinforcement when they're not offensive to a group of historically marginalized people. Listen, uh, I know that this is false, Cammy, because I've not heard you laugh at any of my jokes. Uh, Mike says, Steve claims roasts are his love language, but he married Carol Ann, a vegetarian. What a beta move. First of all, Mike, we roast vegetables, and that's sometimes good. Uh, and I won't repeat the second uh, bit. 
Andreas is that he thinks he, that now he's a dad, he can wear that stupid Indiana Jones hat, but even my dad wouldn't wear it, and my dad is Harrison Ford. Yeah, well, your dad has a dumb earring, okay? So, Lincoln says that Steve's favorite movie is whatever the last thing he just watched is. Listen, Lincoln, you're not wrong, because I've got growing uh, and improving taste because I'm an adult, okay? And it's, plus, it's a golden age of TV and film, all right? And with the pandemic, everything just gets sent right to my house, so I'm watching more than ever, all right? And I watch good stuff. It's not my fault you watch trash. Oh. Diane, my old, old, sorry, my dear, dear friend, Diane, said, I wasn't going to respond because we all know I'm not that funny, but then again, neither are you. So, you know the bar is low. Well, thanks, Diane. Brian, my brother-in-law, says Steve looks like the back end of a walking horse. Well, like, well, you look like the back end of a standing horse. Boom. Oh, from my mother-in-law, I'm so amazed that Steve had the courage to take his newborn baby to a Bernie Sanders rally in New Hampshire. We also went door knocking, all right? Uh, as a grandmother, I do not think I would ever dream of separating a nursing baby from her mother all day, let alone all day and late into that night. Oh, it was nice. He ran out of breast milk and was probably low on diapers. Thank goodness Caroline had a breast pump to relieve her engorged breast. But then again, I think it was attention-seeking behavior. Because their baby is such an adorable baby, everyone was gaga over her, especially with all the Bernie buttons being plastered all over her. She was lapping up the attention. Listen, you're not wrong uh, about every bit of that. Savannah says that he seems like an upbeat guy. He's my sister a lot. He seems like an upbeat guy, but really he's just mastered the art of passive aggressively complaining through his child. For example, that's what I told her, Olive, but Grandma insists you wear this ugly dress she made you. Or, that's rude, Olive. I can't just tell this man not wearing his mask that he's a selfish piece of shit. Actually, I'm going to incorporate both of these, Savannah. Um, I think I heard him already. Eric Dowdle says that COVID-19 is looking forward to shaving its Steve beard soon. And Natalie says that Steve looks like a disappointing version of Bradley Cooper. Disappointing in what way, Natalie? That's my fault. Zach says that Steve is easy to peg, even so Carol Ann wishes it wasn't requested every night. Hey, don't yuck other people's yums, Zach. Steven's so white, says my sister Ellen. His Facebook account is his biggest platform to fight the patriarchy. Listen, it's literally the biggest platform for all the things, Ellen, so I don't know what to tell you. My mother says that the best part about having three children is that at least I have two that I can be proud of. Kudos to Ellen and Sam for being so amazing. Steve's so environmentally friendly, even his jokes are recycled. Listen, Chris, I don't hear you writing new material every week, all right? Uh, Amelia Thornton with a deep cut from the Marines. Why did Steve deliver Domino's while off duty? I was the, it was the only way he could earn a pizza box. Listen, I was I always shot expert. I never had to have that pizza box square ass uh, sharp shoot no marksman uh, shooting badge. All right, so uh, this is just offensive. Congratulations on four years of marriage. Thanks, Dad. Thanks, Craig. Or as Caroline calls it, near-death experience. Uh, well, that's also true. If Brigham Young had known his descendant Steve, opines Tammy, he would have called him a menace to society and not just because he was over 30 before he was married. Correct on all counts, though. I used to, see, I used to think Steve was this crazy socialist trying to convert me to his political ideology, but now I know he's a crazy socialist actually converting me to our political ideology. You're right, Adam. Converted. Eric says, one of my best memories of Steve was when he came to watch us play basketball a few times. Listen, I told you I had an ankle thing, all right? And I haven't seen you play in like a year, so. Steve is raising a brilliant daughter, says Zach. Olive's already memorized the Department of Child Services hotline. She's, she's smart. She's, she's a real smart. He's so woke, the whole family didn't care about feminism until he started talking about it. Again, correct on all counts, and you're welcome, Ellen, who's uh, getting a master's in gender studies. You're welcome for helping you on your way. 
He claims to be against Bond and Luna for civilians, yet he doesn't care about innocent audiences when his jokes bomb. Incorrect, Mom. All my jokes do great. Steve's time in the Marine Corps were a breakthrough in peace in the Middle East as the nations we invaded united in hating Steve. Hey, Chris, I'm just happy to do my part, all right? Uh, wh and what have you been doing? Hmm? Doing improv? Oh, that's my fault. Steve's so extroverted, he used to dance under the name Stage 5 Clinger. Listen, Gwen, you gave me the name, and you gave me the money, and you kept coming back, so who's the real clinger? <coughs> Amelia says, why isn't Steve allowed in tanks anymore? He used to drive tanks in the room. The goldfish banded together to kick him out. I'll kick him a dumb goldfish. Got it. Real, real quick. Steve is the nicest guy I know from Boise who is married to Carolyn. Thank you. Amelia said, what do Steve and the USMC Expeditionary Fighting Vehicle have in common? Um, both are 900 kilograms overweight, have subpar equipment, and are excessively noisy. You're not wrong. Um, but at least I don't cost the taxpayers $14 billion, Amelia, so there. The only reason Steve wants us to roast him, says Mike, is to justify his making fun of everyone in his life constantly. You're not wrong. Steve, there's no need to wear a Black Lives Matter face mask. You can spot your white guilt a mile away. Listen, you keep harping on me about this, and I'm going to start getting information from different places, all right? Is that what you want? Pussy to the right? Is that what you want, Andrea? Oh, let's find my BLM now. Steve is so give peace a chance that when I was helping him move once, there was live ammo and grenades under the bed. Listen, that's, that's less disturbing than the stuff I found under your bed, Ellen, or the remains at least that I found under there. Steve is so white, three percenters have more pigment than he does. And whose fault is that, Mom? Popping on me about my whiteness? You're the one that... Uh. Steve loves to write sketches about torture. You're not wrong, Chris. He's done so. This is redundant because his writing is banned under the Geneva Convention. Uh, well, that's a bit much, but... You know. Thanks to Steve's parenting, says Gwen, all of his language development has really come a long way. You know, you're not wrong. He's talking a lot. Uh, his first words were conspiratard, beta, and sure, Jan. Listen, that's not correct, but I don't see that. What is the difference between Steve and the M113 APC? Nothing. They're both cheap and easy and have a weak bottom. Yeah, someone got uh, Amelia a copy of the Jane's Guide to Vehicles or something, but a deep cut. Andrea says that when Steve was born, his parents named him Steve Young so he'd be a disappointment to Mormons every time he met them. But they didn't need to, because his personality does it all by himself. Well, guess what? The personality is their fault, too. So We're also clinging to the hope that Steve's beard will someday cover the rest of his face. Thanks, Ellen. It is a handsome beard. I'm glad you want more of it. Steve's so white, says my sister, even as high and tight when on paid vacation. Look, you get the right haircut, you get the benefit. That's all I'm saying. All right? You hippie with your purple hair. Do the math. Steve, sa Steve is the friend that I have to explain to other friends, says Chris. Ray. Yep. Uh, I actually get that quite a bit. <clears throat> Steve is actually the reason why I don't have children, says Andrea. The risk of having a child like him is low, but it's enough for me to not take my chances. Well, that, that's between... That's between you and uh, any future children you're not having, but uh, it is a very low risk. Steve's beard is super sexy. Thanks, Zach. I agree. Lots of people do. Uh, if you're the kind of person with a combination pube and foot fetish, listen, there are a lot of them out there, Zach, all right? I don't think like you, you're not a subscriber to my only fan. Steve is so white, he got a graduate degree no one's ever heard of. You're not wrong, Alan. Steve only joined the Marines because it was his only hope of ever getting a hissy. Listen, Amelia, I wasn't wrong, and I also wasn't disappointed, all right? So there's a long and storied tr tradition, and you're just jealous of it. So. Steve's constantly reading, says Mike, but he clearly isn't learning anything. Look, you're the one who's still in college, so I don't know what to tell you. When I look at Steve, says Eric, I think this cancel culture hasn't gone far enough. That's fair, especially since cancel culture is not a thing. True story, says Gwen and Dan. Steve's Dungeons and Dragons character is a giant glitter peacock named Attention Cut. Yeah, and it's a great character. It's a great game. Everyone should play it. 
What's great is that Steve thinks that after we're all vaccinated, we're going to hang out with him more. Between Steve's obvious impotence and all of his intelligence, I'm not convinced he's yourself. You know what, Andrea? Uh, you're not the only one, but uh, you, you, it would be nice if you'd stop bringing it up all the time. In all seriousness, though, Steve, you're a genuine, empathetic, talented guy with a lot of heart. I never get tired of you forcing pictures of Olive into the group chat because you do it with so much love, it's impossible not to smile. I'm honored to write with you, even through this pandemic. I hope we're a success together so that one day I can stab you in the back. Hit Chris. Uh, same to you. I'm, I'm coming for you if we get if we make it. I'm coming. There are a few things worse than the pain of losing a child, says Andrea. Having a conversation with Steve is one of those things. Whew. And Amelia says that Steve's parents hate him because they don't get to fully celebrate Memorial Day. <laughs> Brutal. Thanks for all the posts, everybody. You are great. Much obliged.